living free. And the title of this week is called An Oak of Righteousness. And we're going to start with Ephesians 3, 17 through 21, on the bottom of page 45. I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love really is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is so great you will never fully understand it. Then you will be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now glory be to God by his mighty power at work within us. He is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare ask or hope. This is the passage of scripture that we're going to keep reading every week when you come back to Living Love, Living Free Bible Study. Because we are learning that this scripture is a picture of God's perfect will. Our Heavenly Father's perfect will for every one of our lives is that we would come to know the love of Jesus. That we might experience his love that we might be filled with the fullness of life and power that comes from him. And when we are living in his love, his power is working in us. He is able to bring to pass his plan for us and do beyond what we could ever hope or dream. Our journey in this life is to know love. Our purpose in this life is to know Jesus. And Jesus is love. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much. And so today, we're gonna, we are going to look at the greatest gift that love ever gave. We're going to read Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, on the top of page 46. The greatest gift of love, the Spirit of God, the Master, is on me because God anointed me. He sent me to preach good news to the poor. Heal the heartbroken. Announce freedom to all captives. Pardon all prisoners. God sent me to announce the year of his grace. A celebration of God's destruction of our enemies. And to comfort all who mourn. To care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion. Give them bouquet of roses instead of ashes. Messages of joy instead of news of doom. A praising heart instead of a languid spirit. Rename them Oaks of righteousness planted by God to display his glory. His glory is God's good opinion. His glory is God's character. His glory is God's image. We were created in his image. We have his glory inside of us. His good opinion of us. And the scripture says that he renamed us an oak of righteousness that we may display his good opinion of us. All, that God, all of God's promises, all of God's character, all that God is, all of God's power lives inside of us because we are one with Christ. The good news is the message of righteousness. You know, I went to church for many, many, many years and never heard the good news. I don't know about you, but I went for many, many, many years and all I heard was how I needed to be righteous. How I needed to be good enough. What I needed to do to get my father's approval. I didn't hear the good news. The good news is that Jesus made me righteous. He gave me my father's good approval. He made me qualified for all the promises of God in Christ Jesus. I am who God says I am. Woohoo! That's the good news. Let me, let me say it again. Okay, let me ask you if this is good news. If you obey all of God's commandments and do everything that he says and never mess up, you will be declared righteous. And you will be worthy of God's promises and blessings in your life. And if you follow these ten steps, you'll get healed. And if you follow these three, you'll have prosperity in your life. And if you do this, your, your prayers will be answered if you, if you 
do this and this and this and this and this. Don't miss any of those steps because your prayers will be answered if you do. But if you do all of these things, then you'll be worthy of God's blessing. And we all say, failed. <laughs> Some of us go, can't even do it. Others of us go, I'm going to try really hard this week. This week, I'm going to try really hard to do it all right so God, the Father can declare me worthy of his blessing. That isn't the good news, but it's what I heard. I'm going to say it again. It isn't the good news. The old covenant says if you obey God's word, you'll be made righteous. Nobody obeyed perfectly. We were all declared sinners. Everyone, according to the law and commands of God, if you base your righteousness on how well you do good things, big F, failure, no, no man except for Jesus Christ obeyed every command of God and attained righteousness through the old covenant. The new covenant, the new covenant, Jesus came with a message of good news. He said in Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, I'm anointed to bring the good news to the brokenhearted. Why were we all brokenhearted? Because we knew in our hearts we were failures. That's why. We knew in our hearts we didn't measure up. Jesus came to tell you, you measure up, girl, because I measured you up to me. I put you, me inside of you. I gave you my righteousness. I gave you my qualification. I gave you my approval. I gave you my goodness. So the new covenant way to righteousness is to believe Jesus. And when you trust in Jesus, you become righteous. And that's the good news message that we are all supposed to be receiving and delivering. Obedience is a fruit of that righteousness. You know why I obey God? Because it's who I am. I'm just like Jesus. He gave me his righteousness as a gift. I don't have to earn it. I could never deserve it. But he has stamped his approval on me and you and said, you are righteous. You are just like me. And if I'm just like Jesus, guess what? I listen to and I follow my Father's voice. Amen. Mm -hmm. Obedience is a fruit of knowing you're righteous. It's not the way to righteousness. It's the fruit of righteousness. Woohoo! And as long as you stay over here trying to earn righteousness, you're going to fail. You're going to be in the vicious cycle of sin your whole life, never feeling like you measure up. Guilt and condemnation, shame, just whirling around in your heart because we all know we fail. We all know according to the law we fall short. Is that true? Yep. So we can't measure ourselves up against the law anymore. we got to let it go, ladies and men. Let it that go. It's an old way and it's bad news. The good news is it's a gift. Righteousness is a gift given to you by a Savior who loved you so much and he knew you could never measure up to the law on your own. So he came, he lived a perfect life. He was the only one who was made righteous by the law. And then because he loved you and me so much, he died a sinner's death, the death we deserved. He took off our filthy, sin-stained clothes, and he wrapped us in a robe of righteousness. The greatest gift of love ever given is a gift that causes you to rest in the truth that you are so loved, that he would love us so much that we don't have to do anything but receive his good opinion of us. And in receiving that righteousness, that gift of approval, that gift of blessing, that gift of favor, in receiving it every day, letting that truth penetrate in your heart, the fruit of righteousness will come out in your life mm -hmm. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, not by your own human effort over here, 
But by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will begin to see yourself thinking, acting, and loving like Jesus. Because that's who you truly are. Woohoo! Okay, we're going to see it again. I love this. The message of good news is the gift of righteousness. Let me say it again. The message of good news. There is no other message of good news. It is righteousness. If you're not hearing that you're already righteous in Christ Jesus, that all of his promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus, that you're qualified in Christ Jesus, then it isn't the good news. Amen. The message of good news is the gift of righteousness in Christ. Amen. And I'm going to prove it to you right now. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5, 5, 17 through 21. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God. Amen. Who, threw, who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned. To be the offering for our sin, that we might be made right with God through Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 in another translation says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Did you see that, ladies? The wonderful message of reconciliation that we have been called to tell people is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, every man. He was in Christ reconciling every living being to himself by not counting man's sins against them. And he's given us the wonderful good news to share, to go out and tell people, come back to God. He's not mad at you. Come back to God. He's proved his love for you. He has a gift he wants you to receive. Come back to God. Jesus became sin that you might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's the message that we have been called to deliver to people. Not one of judgment. Not one of anger, not one of, of you better get your life together or God's going to get you. That's not the message we've been called to sell. We've been called to give the good news. You just had inherited a million dollars. <laughs> it's, you know, it's ready for you to come get if you'll just receive it. Mm -hmm. Every human being, all they have to do is receive this gift. Mm -hmm. And when they receive the gift of Jesus, the gift that he's given of righteousness, they become perfect, holy, righteous, blessed, favored, approved, justified, an heir to every blessing of God. Instantly. Because you know what the qualification is to be worthy of God's promises and blessings? You have to be righteous. That's it. Just have to be righteous. If you're looking at it in the way of the law, you might as well give it up. You ain't going to be righteous. But if you hear the good news that this righteousness is a gift, that you must only receive. You can find perfect peace in your life. There's no more struggling. There's no more striving. There's no more trying to measure up. Jesus did it for you. It is a gift that he gave. 
with the sacrifice of his body and his blood. It was all for the purpose of giving you one gift, righteousness. It's that simple. Because again, righteousness is all that you need to partake of everything God has to give, to partake of everything that he is. <coughs> righteousness is all that you need, and it's found in Jesus. the greatest demonstration of unconditional love. Jesus paid a great price to give you this gift of righteousness. You know what? When we say, and I'm just, I'm just going to admonish you with this, when we say, I've already heard that, we devalue the gift that our Savior paid with his blood. I have heard people say, I've already heard that. I've already heard. I know I'm the righteousness of God. No. This gift, if you knew there was a treasure chest in your backyard with a million dollars in it, you wouldn't stop digging until you found it, would you? Jesus is our treasure, and it's in him that we find true life. Righteousness is the greatest gift ever given. It is more valuable than anything the world could ever give us. This is the only thing you need, and it's been given to you. I want to know it more, don't you? I want to understand it deeper, don't you? I want to know what it means to be righteous. I want to walk in it, live in it, breathe in it, because my Savior paid a great price for me to walk in the fruit of his righteousness. Isaiah 53, 3 through 11. He was despised and rejected a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we would be whole. He was whipped and we were healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep, he never and as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone. And he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous. Ladies, that's it. Righteousness. Jesus loved us so much to give us the gift of righteousness. He died. Isaiah 53, 3 through 11 tells the story. Jesus died for one purpose, to give us the gift of righteousness. Wow. I'm going to keep reading, and I'm going to get to something, OK? <laughs> I love this stuff. Romans 5, 5 through 9, page 48. We're going to say it again. I'm going to just keep showing you these scriptures because this is what convinces you. Not me getting up here and talking. But when you read it in the Word, then you get to decide, is God's Word true? And if you decide it's not, then you choose death. 
But if you choose it's true, you're choosing life. Because every word of God is true. true. Woo! Romans 5, 5 through 9. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. While we were yet in weakness, powerless to help ourselves, at the fitting time Christ died for in behalf of the ungodly. Now it is an extraordinary thing for one to give his life, even for an upright man, though perhaps for a, for a noble and lovable and generous benefactor, someone might even dare to die. But God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, we are now justified, made righteous, brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood. How did God prove he loves you? We should never question God's love again. He proved it 2,000 years ago when he sent his son to die for us sinners so that we could be made Righteous through his blood. That's the good news. What does it mean to be righteous? You can hear that all day, but until you understand what that truly means and what it really, how it really affects your life, it doesn't really affect your life, does it? What does it mean? What is this gift of love that he proved? <clears throat> living loved. Living free. Living loved. Living free is about understanding and knowing this gift of love that he's given to us. Righteousness. Righteousness means justified, acquitted, free from blame or guilt, holy and innocent. If you really receive the gift of righteousness, you will be done with shame forever. You will not receive shame in your heart because you know you've been made innocent by the blood of Jesus. You will not receive the lies of the enemy that try to tell you you're not good enough because you know you've been justified by the blood of Jesus. One day when I was asking the Lord, Lord, give me a deeper revelation and understanding of righteousness, I was doing some studying, and I came across this definition on the bottom of page 48. To be made righteous means that you have been justified. And this is what justified means. It is the judicial act of God by which he pardons all the sins of those who believe in Christ and accounts, accepts, and treats them as righteous in the eye of the law. In addition to the pardon of sin, justification declares that all the claims of the law are satisfied. The law is not relaxed or set aside, but it is declared to be fulfilled in the strictest sense. And so the person justified is declared to be entitled to all the advantages and rewards arising from perfect obedience to the law. It proceeds on the crediting to the believer by God himself of the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. Justification is not just the forgiveness of man without righteousness, but it's a declaration that he possesses a righteousness which perfectly and forever satisfies the law, namely Christ's righteousness. Woo! When you've been made... When the Father justifies you, you are declared having, I mean, it's just as if you have obeyed every law perfectly. When he justifies you, that's what this says. It says, the, I'm going to read this one little part again. I just love it. The person justified is declared entitled to all the advantages and rewards arising from perfect obedience to the law. So when you are declared righteous, the Father is saying, I see you as though you perfectly obeyed the law. 
And even when you fail, he still sees you as one who perfectly obeyed the law. Did you obey the law? Have you all perfectly obeyed the law? No. no. This is a gift given to us by a Savior who loves us. He perfectly obeyed the law. And because we couldn't, he declared us righteous. So what does that do for Connie's heart? It doesn't matter what storm comes my way doesn't matter what negative news comes my way. doesn't matter what comes out of the mouth of my husband, out of the mouth of my children, out of the mouth of people around me. I know that I've been made righteous. And what my, father's, what my father promises, what my father says, that is what's true about Connie. I have been declared, I have been declared, Righteous. I have been given the perfect righteousness of Jesus. I have been given every promise of God. Yes and amen in Christ Jesus. I don't have to do one more thing. When somebody gives you a gift, do you pay for that gift? No, you just get to receive it and enjoy it. That's it. My Father, your Father God, our Savior gave us a gift. You don't have to pay for that gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to work real hard to get it. You just get to receive and enjoy the benefit of that gift. And the benefit of that gift is all the promises of God are yes and amen in your life because you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Mm. You don't have to try to figure out how to get something from God. You don't have to listen to the five things you have to do to get your prayers answered. All you have to do is receive a love so great. Father, you made me righteous. You made me righteous. You love me. And because you made me righteous, this promise that you'll supply all my needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus, it belongs to me because you made me righteous. This promise that your spirit and your word will not depart from my children, it belongs to me because you made me righteous. This promise that I'm approved, that I'm valued, that I'm accepted, it belongs to me because you made me righteous. And when you receive the gift of righteousness, the Bible says you reign in life as a king through Jesus Christ. There is no trouble that can come your way that will shake you. When you know this gift that you've been given, You are just like Jesus. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. All things work together for your good. You don't have to try to figure it out. All you got to do is I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You love me. This situation is going to work out for my good. Because that's the promise I have. And I can rest in it. Do you understand how many years I went through trying to figure it out? How many years I wanted to know again? Tell me again how I get God's blessing. Tell me again how I can get my prayers answered. Tell me again how I can find peace. Tell me again. And I found the answer. It's in the gift of righteousness. It's receiving it every single day. I've been made righteous in Christ. I don't have to figure it out anymore, ladies. And neither do you. (laughs) (laughs) 
There's one lie the enemy tries to tell us. We learned that in the last two weeks of Bible study. What is it? You're not who God says you are. And there's one truth that if you'll receive down and let it penetrate deep inside your heart, it will bring you life. One lie. You're not who God says you are. One, it'll get you depressed faster than anyone, any other thing in the whole world. Honestly, you, part, you, you partake, you're not who God says you are, you're not valuable, you're not approved, you're not loved, God's not going to take care of you, um, you're just a failure, look what you did, you're not as good as her, all of those are, you're not who God says you are. Every one of those things I just said. You're not who God says you are. If you let that penetrate deep inside your heart, guess what it will bring you? Death. It will bring you depression. Can I get an amen on that one? Okay. There is one truth that will set you free every single day of your life, and that is this. You are loved. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Who is Jesus? That's who you are. He's approved. He's accepted. He's righteous. He's favored. He's blessed. He's an heir. Woo! So you receive that truth when the devil comes at you with you're not and you say I am and you let that penetrate your heart, that is where life is. That's where true life is. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I know my Father loves me. Why do I know that? Because he gave me the greatest gift of love. He made me righteous. He made me just like Jesus. I don't have to try to be like Jesus anymore. I've been given the gift. When I begin to receive it, believe it, think upon it, ponder it, let it penetrate deep inside my heart, guess what comes out in my life? The fruit of righteousness. Okay, what's the one lie? What will it do if you let that go down in your heart? It'll press you, depress you. What's the one truth that'll set you free? I am the righteousness of God. I am loved. Mm -hmm. There is nothing more he could have done for us to prove his love. He made us just like Jesus. He made us an heir. He made us different. We are in this world, but we are not of it. Mm -hmm. The news that comes in this world does not affect the righteous one. The negative news you hear on the, on the news uh, about the bad economy, about the disease that's spreading, that, that does not affect the righteous one. It does not affect the righteous one. The reason why it has affected the righteous one is because we haven't seen ourselves as righteous. The reason why the 10,000 to the, to the side and the 1,000 to the left has been us, because we haven't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know why we find ourselves in the 10,000 to the left and the 1,000 to the right? Because we haven't received the gift of love that we have been made righteous. And this stuff doesn't come near us. What our heart believes is what comes out in our lives. That's the way God made it from the beginning of time. You can believe the devil's lies or you can believe the one who loves you. That's what's going to determine your life. I believed lies for so long and experienced lack in every area of my life. I know that brings death. But now every single day when the, the, when the death tries to come at me, when I feel the negative, negative things in my heart, I know that's not who I am. I have been made new. The economy doesn't affect Connie because she's been made righteous in Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs> the pestilence and disease that goes all around, it doesn't touch Connie. Why? Because she's been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Isn't that right, Lindsay? People's negative opinion of me doesn't affect Connie because I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you.
tell you something. One of the things that's gone deeper in my soul in the last just few weeks about righteousness is that my home, you know what God says about Connie's home and about your home? That it is joyful and it is peaceful. And some of the things that has bothered me is when one of my family is not peaceful, is not joyful. That bothers me. You know what I found out? My home. My home. Because I have been made righteous in Christ Jesus. If you did your Bible study, you read it. It says that the Lord declares the home of the righteous joyful and favored with blessing. It says that the effect, the fruit of righteousness is peace. The effect of righteousness is confidence forever. My people will enjoy peaceful dwelling places and secure homes. That's what our Father God who loves us has spoken over us. Now if I don't agree with him, guess what I have in my home? Turmoil. But I ain't agreeing with that anymore. See, it's not enough for Connie to walk in her home in peace and joy and, oh, Jesus loves me. Woohoo! When I see my child or I see my husband dealing with discouragement and depression. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, what I'm trying to say is if it's in your home, <laughs> if it's your family, the Bible says that the Lord has declared your family joyful. That your home would be filled with peace. Why? Because you're the righteousness of God in Christ. That is your inheritance. It's my inheritance, and I'm not putting up with it anymore. I'm not putting up with my husband or my children being discouraged because of the lies of the enemy. You know how I've been dealing with that? If I see that happening, if I see my, my husband getting discouraged or depressed about something, or I see one of my kids getting discouraged or sad about something, I've been going and saying, Father, you love me. You love me so much that you even covered my family in your promise to me. I don't have to worry about their hearts, Father, because you said you declared them joyful. You said you gave them the mind of Christ. You said my home would be filled with peace. Everyone who enters in this home will be filled with peace because I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that's what my Heavenly Father says about me. And I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to receive it. And I'm going to push away anything other than what my Father says. Because I don't want that. Do you? Do you want depression and discouragement and anxiety and fear running in your home? No. Do you have to put up with it anymore? No. No. So when you see it, this is just fresh off the... <laughs> fresh off. I'm just... Re revelation comes to me. That's why you can't say, I already know I'm the righteousness of God. There are so many depths and heights and breadths and lengths to this thing. We're learning and growing every single day. And if I don't know it, I'm not going to walk in it. I have to know it. My determined purpose is to know Jesus. I'm going to keep looking for him. I'm going to keep seeking after him. I'm going to keep knowing who he is because when I see who he is, I know who I am. And you know what? How quickly sometimes I forget? <laughs> Do you have that problem? We have the mind of Christ. The only thing he forgets is people's sins. know where I'm at. <laughs> I'm telling you what. Okay. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Where do I go? Page 53. If you have been made righteous, these promises belong to you. I have to read Romans 117 first because, again, another scripture that tells us on the top of page 52, the good news tells us how God made us right in his sight. What's the good news, girls? We've been made righteous. 
The good news tells us how we've been made right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Faith is agreeing with the one who loves us. We have been made righteous. That means every time you read in the word of God about a righteous person, guess who you're reading about? That's right. That's wonderful. You're reading about you. Jesus gave you the gift of righteousness. These, did you just love reading these promises this week? Yeah. On page 53, prosperity is the reward of Connie. Because she's been made righteous in Christ Jesus. The Lord, Psalms 512. For surely, O oh Lord, you bless the righteous. You bless us, Lord, because you've made us righteous and you surround us with favor as a shield. Psalm 37, 17 and 19, the Lord sustains Connie. She will not be ashamed in the time of evil. And in the days of famine, she will have abundance. I have let that scripture penetrate to the deep resources of recesses of my heart. Father, this is what you say about me. The news may say the economy is bad. But, Father, you say that in the time of famine, in the time of a bad economy, you have given me the gift of righteousness, and you say, I'm going to have abundance. I shared that in the lesson, if you read it this week. But it, it has become such a part of me. I mean, when you, you don't have to worry about confessing the word of God when you just, <laughs> you know, I just am amazed how long I made that a work. Trying to confess all the right scriptures. You don't have to do that. You let this scripture go penetrate down deep in your heart. All you got to do is just think upon it. Thank you, Jesus. You love me. You love me. You love me. When the famine comes, I have abundance because you made me righteous. And you think about that. And you ponder it. And you bask in the love of God in it. And then when the famine comes, guess what comes out of your mouth? I'm going to have abundance. And I tell my kids, I tell my kids, Anytime we hear bad news, I don't even watch the news because I don't even want to listen to the bad news. But I still hear it. You know why? Because there's people in the world that are telling me what the bad news is. So if you get around people, guess what you're going to hear? Bad news. You're going to hear about the pestilences coming. You're going to hear about the bad economy. You're going to hear about how, you know, the devil's taken all our children in, to hell. You know, you're going to hear this. Is it not true? But what are we listening to? What's penetrated deep down in our heart? What does our Father say? All grace abounds toward us. We have all sufficiency in all things. We abound in every good work. Because we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What's the qualification for these promises? I know I've said this a hundred times today, haven't I? <laughs> But we're, gonna get, we're, we're getting it down deep in our hearts. It's penetrating deep in our hearts. These promises belong to us. Why did, have I not experienced them at times? Because I really wasn't receiving his love. I really wasn't. I was allowing what I saw in the world, what's happened to somebody else, maybe what has happened to me, to dictate what I believe. But God's word is true. And I've come to a place in my life that I don't care what I've experienced in my past. I don't, I, it doesn't matter what has been going on around me and what the news says. I'm going back to Jesus. I'm going to live in him. I'm going to trust him. It's my only hope in this world. Mm -hmm. I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And in that truth, I find perfect peace. Thank you, Jesus. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them, and he delivers them from all their troubles. A blessed family. This is what I was telling you earlier. Psalms, Proverbs 3.33, the Lord declares blessed, joyful, and favored with blessings, the home of the righteous. Woo! The desire of the righteous shall be granted. Proverbs 10.24, Powerful and effective prayers. James 5.16, 5, the prayer of the righteous man is powerful and effective. Aren't you glad that you can pray? When you pray with the understanding that you are righteous, 
Your prayers are powerful and effective. Because when we pray outside of Christ, we wonder whether our prayers will make a difference or not. But when we pray with that understanding, Father, you made me righteous. My prayers are powerful and effective. Thank you, Lord. Then you pray with power and authority because you are the righteousness of God in Christ. And this is the last scripture, and I know I need to, I need to wrap this up. We're going to go to mm, page 56. We're going to read these last two scriptures. I love, I love these scriptures. I don't want to stop. Isaiah 54, 14, you shall establish yourself in righteousness. You shall be far from even the thought of oppression or destruction. For you, sh for you shall not fear and from tear, for it will not come near you. When you're established in righteousness, the thought of oppression will not come near you. Fear will not come near you. You may hear it, but it will not penetrate your heart because you know who you are. I'll tell you this little cute little thing that happened this last week. I picked up my daughter from dance class. It might have been the week before. But anyway, I picked her up from dance class. I said, how did your dance class go, honey? She goes, it was, it was good. She said, but this boy, this boy in there, she said, told me that I have, fat, I have big arms and big legs. <laughs> and I said, well, is that true about you, Victoria? And she goes, no. She said, Jesus says I'm tall and thin like a palm tree. <laughs> That's that scripture. That's that scripture right there. When you're established in who you are in Christ and what he says about you, the thought of oppression will not come near you. See, that's a thought of oppression. I have big arms and big legs. I'm not pretty. There's something wrong with me. That's the thought of oppression. But, G but Victoria said, no, that's not true. I'm not letting that go in my heart because Jesus said I'm tall and thin like a palm tree. That's how we can live every single day, ladies. When the thought of oppression comes at you, what is the thought of oppression? Any negative news. Anything that causes your heart to be sad, anything that brings negative emotions is a lie of the devil. It's the thought of oppression, but all you have to do is say no. No, Father, you love me. You love me. I know who I am. I know what you say, Father. You love me. The thought of oppression doesn't come near you. When you are established in righteousness, the thought of oppression, who is the, who is the author of oppression? The devil. He's the father of lies. But when you know you are loved, when you know you are righteous, when those negative thoughts and that bad news comes, you say, no, my Father loves me. Lord, what do you say? And that brings me to that next verse in Ephesians 4. I think it's Ephesians 4. Um, I love this. Ephesians 4, 23 through 24. It says, instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. That's how you put on righteousness. That when you find yourself in a place where negative thoughts are coming at you, you turn and you say, Father, you invite the Holy Spirit into your thoughts. You invite the Holy Spirit into your thoughts and say, Father, what do you say? And he renews your thoughts and your attitude. When you invite him, you know the feeling, if you're, if you're tempted to be angry at somebody, or you're tempted to feel lacking in an area of your life, or you're tempted to um, get frustrated, invite Jesus into the thought processes. Mm -hmm. Invite Jesus. Let him renew your thought. Lord, what do you say? Help me to see this through your eyes. What is your truth, Father? Let him renew your thoughts and your attitudes by inviting him. It's that simple. Into those places that are, that are trying to cause you fear. And when we're rooted and grounded in righteousness, the Bible says that we will display God's glory, which brings us to that beautiful tree on page... 
I got to tell you a wonderful story. P uh, page 59. Look at that beautiful tree. You're an oak of righteousness, ladies. You see these roots right here? They're going down into the soil of God's marvelous love. How does that happen? Just by agreeing with the one who loves us. Just by inviting him into our thought processes. Lord, what do you say about this situation? You love me, Lord. You're going to take care of me. You're going to perfect that which concerns me. And as your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love by talking to him about how he's made you righteous, how he loves you, the promise he's given you, the scripture says that the Holy Spirit is at work to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could hope or dream. The glory of God is everything God says about you. The glory of God is the promises of God that become evident and reality in your life. I'm going to, st I'm going to sh stop with this wonderful thing that happened to me this last week. Me and my husband have been going through this process of getting a loan for a home in Branson. And I have many wonderful ideas of how to use this home that we feel like the Lord has directed us to buy. And the process has not been easy. We would feel like we had everything done, and then we get a call. We need more. We need more information. We need more information. And, and through the whole process of walking through this loan, getting, getting this loan for this home, I would have thoughts of concern come to my head. But I would say, Lord, you're working this out for my good. You're causing my husband's thoughts to be agreeable to your will. And our plans will be established and succeed. I know you love me, Father. You've made me righteous. I can rest in you. I don't have to worry about this. And if this home is not for us, you'll shut the door. And if this home is for us, you'll open it wide. I can rest in you, Father. You love me. My roots are going down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And I'm walking in peace because this is a big deal for us. This is a huge another whole path of we feel like the Lord's leading us in. Okay, and so when the thought of oppression tries to come, no, Lord, you love me. You're going to work this out for our good. You're going to cause our thoughts to be agreeable to your will, Lord. Continually bringing him into my thought processes. You see what I'm saying? Woo! Continually bringing him into the thought process of this, of this journey we're on. Well, last Friday, my husband calls me, and again, this... You know, they're wanting more information. They're, and I'm to the point of, just forget it. I don't even want the house anymore. Just don't give us the loan. We'll just live our lives without this house. We don't need it anyway. I mean, honestly, that was kind of, I was feeling frustration. And, of course, after I got off the phone with my husband, I shared that with my friends, how that was frustrating to me, that they kept wanting more and more and more information. But I felt, when I felt that frustration, I had to, and I heard it come out of my mouth, I saw it. It's like, that's not who I am. This is not what my father has for me. This is not the life he came to give me. He did not come to give me a frustrated life. He came to give me a life of peace, one in which I listen to what he says, and, and I agree with it, and I walk in peace. And so again, I sat there and said, Father, I'm inviting you, Lord, show me again. Help me to see the truth. What do you say? I want to live in peace. Because the fruit of righteousness is peace. And believe me, frustration is not peace. It's not. It's not the fruit of being established in who you are. And so as I sat there again, the Lord brought to my remembrance again, it's the promise he's just continually, just continuing to remind me, Connie, I'm working this out for your good. I love you. You can trust me. I'm working it out for your good. We got in the car, we had been at a lunch plate, we were eating lunch together, and we got in the car to go home, and my friend Sherry shares this scripture with me, the Lord will perfect that which concerns, concerns you. And when she said that, it was like the Father spoke to me again. See, he speaks in so many ways. If it's good news, it's from the Father. And I thought, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. See, my husband was getting kind of frustrated, I was getting kind of frustrated, this thing was seeming kind of... Just frustrating. But the Lord will perfect. I'm going to take care of it for you, Connie. I'm going to take care of it for you. So I'm sitting in the car, and I'm thinking again about what the Lord says. Inviting him into my thought processes. Allowing him to change the way I think. 
allowing him to change my attitude by inviting him into my thought process. And as I sat there, peace just came over me. Lord, you're going to perfect that which concerns me. And I'm going to go home and tell everybody on Facebook, the Lord will perfect them too. <laughs> perfect that which concerns them too. And I did. Four, I even looked at the thing. It was 4 o'clock, 4.24 or something like that. I posted, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Psalms 138.8. The Lord was renewing my thought process. Peace was coming over me. Within just a few minutes, by 5 o'clock that day, my husband came into the bedroom where I was posting my Facebook scripture. <laughs> and he said to me that God had made a way for us to pay cash for this home in Branson. We didn't need the loan anymore. Wow. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! <laughs> Thursday, we did not have the money to pay cash for this house. Friday, we had the money to pay cash for this house. And when he said that, I'm overwhelmed. I am just, oh my goodness, Lord. I never dreamed this could be possible. I did not ask him to pay cash for this home. I didn't dream it would even be possible for us to pay cash for this home. I didn't think about it. I, do you know Ephesians 3.20? He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think or dream or hope. I didn't hope for it. I didn't dream for it. I didn't ask for it. I didn't think about it. My heart actually didn't even go there. I didn't even think it was possible that could ever happen. But you know what I did do? I allowed Jesus into my thought processes. Mm -hmm. I received his love. He said he's going to take care of that which concerns me. He said he was going to work it out for my good. He said he was going to perfect that which concerns me. And he did beyond what I could ever hope or dream. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing, ladies? Mm -hmm. That's the kind of life Jesus came to give us. You don't have to worry about, oh, I'm going to believe God to be debt-free. I'm going to believe God to be debt -free. Yeah, I'm going to Just start receiving his love. Lord, you love me. You love me. You're working everything out for my good. Your blessings overtake me. I'm blessed coming in and going out, Father, because you love me. You made me righteous. And you watch God do beyond what you could hope or dream in every area of your life. We only have to do one thing, ladies. Receive the gift. Receive the gift of his love. You've been made righteous. You can rest. You can rest in every promise because you're qualified in Christ, because you've been made righteous in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today for Bible study. If you were blessed by today's message, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so that you will be notified every time new content is uploaded. Have a blessed day.